Hello everyone, welcome to Reiki Radio. I am your host, Yolanda, and I am just adjusting my seat, <laughs> getting adjusted, getting ready to chit-chat with you all today. And what I wanted to talk to you about today is expansion of meaning. So what I mean by that is I want us to think about expanding meaning in our life, like how we perceive things, expanding meaning in our points of view, how we define things, you know, on and on and on. So um, this is something that I have been thinking about for the last few days, actually, and I'll tell you how it came up. But I was thinking about this for the last few days, and one of the things I realized, because I have random thoughts all the time. I mean, you know, Aquarian mind, I'm an air sign, and we uh, tend to live in our heads. And I was laughing at myself the other day when I realized part of the reason I enjoy sharing so much with you all and doing the podcast is because it really is kind of a way that I get to brain dump. So all of the thinking that I do and, you know, meditating on things, once I share it with you, it's like, okay, it releases from my space and I can focus on some other thoughts. So <laughs> this expansion of meaning is something I have been thinking about and I'm really looking forward to hearing your thoughts about this and what we discuss and explore today. So as always, after the show, you can uh, email me any thoughts or insights that come up for you. But I would also invite you to join us in the Seeker Circle. Uh, in that space, we have conversations, people share and exchange, and it's just, it's a beautiful community that is, you know, an extension of the podcast. So speaking of the Seeker Circle, um, another thing that we are doing in there that I would like to, you know, share with all of you in case you want to do it in your own space whether you join us in the Seeker Circle or not. Uh, last Thursday, I asked everyone to join me in a four-week challenge. And this challenge is to connect with the Reiki symbols, one symbol per week over the next four weeks. And we are starting with the power symbol. So what we're doing is I'll come in the Seeker Circle every Thursday do a little short discussion about the symbol, what it represents, on and on. And then in that week, we are all connecting with the energy, allowing ourselves to build relationships with the symbols, um, you know, really kind of challenging ourselves to expand meaning of the symbols for ourselves, expand our definitions and understanding of these energies. And the best ways to do that, of course, is through experience. So if you want to join us, again, we're focusing on one symbol per week and meditating on that energy, um, drawing the symbol, chanting the name of the symbol. There are several ways that you can do it. But if you do it each day, you may find that you have a different experience day to day. So take note of what came up for you. Again, you can come into our Facebook group and share what your experiences are there, or you can email me or keep it to yourself, <laughs> whatever you like to do. But I just wanted to um, share that with all of you. And we will be moving on to the second symbol this Thursday. So I guess because, I mean, this podcast is... Um, on Monday, so I'll share with you what has come up with me in my connection with the power symbol. Uh, I it's only been a few days, you know, since we started the challenge, but interestingly, we had um, rain here this morning, and I was watching the rain and kind of mesmerized by the circular pattern that it creates when it hits water in the pool, and that circular. Um, formation, of course, from, you know, caused by the raindrops, reminded me of the power symbol. And so I was kind of just captivated by that, thinking about how the challenge is focused on that this week. 
And I started to think about what the symbol means in a more expanded way or what it could possibly represent in a more expanded way. And the first thing that came to mind was starting at the center of the power symbol, the very center of it, and that being symbolic of being in, in the womb, before being birthed into this world. And once we come through the womb, once we come out of our mothers, then starts that outward spiral out into the world. So it's like doing the power symbol in reverse. And once we have experience through all of those curvatures of the spiral, we make it to the end point where we start questioning. We've experienced some things outside of the womb. We've experienced the world. We've worked our way out of the spiral into the world. And then we wonder, what's missing? So we decide to journey back in, right? And that's what a lot of us are doing now, like this, these paths of seeking or questioning and wanting to connect with ourselves in deeper ways. So we start working back in, following that path of the power symbol back into ourselves. And as we journey back in, following that spiral, we go through this process of awakening, reawakening, remembering our true nature. And once we get back into that core space, we learn some things. We have, um, you know, inspirations, insights, new ways of seeing, expansion of meaning. And then what happens is we don't stop. We work our way back out again. We follow the spiral back out into the world so that we can start the practice of living from our spiritual center. And then the cycle of going in and out repeats itself until we master the balance, find that harmonization, the non-duality. So that's what came up for me in um, meditating on the power symbol. And again, if you want to join us in this challenge, I would love to hear what comes up for you. And just like I shared in the secret circle, there is no right or wrong. And even if you meditate on the symbol and things that come up for you seem different than the definition you were taught about it, don't doubt what comes through for you or your impressions. Just really allow yourself to be in observation. So, yeah. Okay. So aside from that, one last thing with the group, um, I also asked everyone to do like a meet and greet. And I have to tell you guys, it made my day. Okay. I mean, I made my a few days. I asked everyone in the secret circle to post a Facebook live of themselves introducing themselves to the group and sharing, you know, what they practice because some people are just curious about Reiki, some people are Reiki master level, there's everything in between. And when I got the first few videos, I got the alert on my phone that there were videos posted. It was so exciting to finally put faces to names and to see these people and to hear their voices. So it'd be just the same as, say, for example, maybe you've listened to the podcast for a while. Maybe you've even emailed me, but I have no idea who you are. And so to have the opportunity to f like meet all of you in you know some sense i mean it was just the absolute best and so we're doing that and you can join us for that as well um okay so i should probably move on from that because i could talk about the secret circle all day it just makes my heart smile <laughs> so anyway today we are talking about expansion of meaning and what's interesting is you know last week we talked about the unknown and I was thinking about it after the show, as I always do, and I realized that I forgot to mention the unknown that we dive into when we do this work. I mean, that's a huge component of the unknown, right? This 
self-connection, meditation, working with energy, all of these things that propel us into experiences beyond what we may have been used to, that propel us into this realm of the unknown that we may have had stories about, you know, people told us to, you know, be afraid or whatever it may be. So we do a deep dive into the unknown, actually, just by starting on these paths, because we do end up working through fear and trying to work beyond old teachings, old beliefs, you know, societal views of what's normal. And once we're in it, there's even those periods where we have difficulty putting our experiences into words. And for some of us, that can be a struggle because if we can't explain it and we can't prove it, no one can validate it for us, right? So a lot of people hide or don't share with anyone or question their own experiences, don't believe what they experienced because there's no way to validate it. So that's another thing that we learn to work through is trusting ourselves and trusting our experiences and stepping out of the need to appease other people or to be validated by others in many ways. So on the other side, you know, once we get comfortable in this and start playing with things and connecting with ourselves, Oftentimes, things make more sense, right? It's like your awareness sharpens. You become more aware of things, even things that have always been a part of your external life. You start seeing them in new ways. So that really leads into what we're talking about today, expansion of meaning. And a lot of the work that we do on these paths, meditating, energy work, yoga, all of these things, they help us to expand meaning. Okay? So, that was a bit of a long intro. Please forgive me, but get comfortable and enjoy the show. Okay, so expansion of meaning. Um, First, I just want to tell you where this thought came from. Uh, You know, I always joke on the podcast that I get random thoughts when I'm driving or when I'm in the shower, you know, when I'm in a trance state, right? And this thought actually started out with me. I was driving and I was thinking about all the emails that I get around intuitive development. I get a lot of questions around how do I trust my intuition? How do I know the difference between my intuition, my imagination? How do I meet my guides? How do I know if they're real? All of these questions around basically how to sharpen or strengthen our intuitive awareness or how to have understanding around how to translate and trust the intuitive mind, which I mean, obviously makes sense for, you know, several reasons, because on one hand, culturally, um, and, and even from like very young ages, many of us were taught to ignore our intuitive mind, to ignore what we could see, feel, or sense that was not in physical form. We were told and taught that we were making things up. We were told and taught to fear what was non-physical, on and on and on. So there are many reasons that we may tug of war and question and doubt when it comes to the intuitive mind. But one thing I want to point out right away is that it's part of your natural design. We have our analytical mind, yes. We have our intuitive mind. We have so many aspects and layers to our consciousness, to our minds. But we have just been taught again, in many ways, to develop or strengthen certain aspects of our minds while ignoring other components. So anyway, I was thinking about this, um, the emails that I receive, and, you know, I, I always respond to emails, and I try to give answers or respond in ways that will support you, um, 
But the truth is, when it comes to intuitive development, sometimes it's 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 much easier to show you or guide you through something than to just you know tell you something in an email because with the intuitive mind it really does come through it's experiential like you have to have the experience and um work with you know certain practices and tools to help you not only strengthen it and recognize it but also learning how to translate it so anyway uh that's what i was thinking about and then my thought progressed on to all of the voices in our heads. You know, it's like, of course people doubt their intuition because they have like 10 different voices in their head on any given day, right? I mean, we do. And when I was thinking about this, I was like, oh yeah, I mean, even that alone, yes, you would question which one of these voices, which one of these um, uh, voices of, you know, this inner talk that I'm having with myself. Is it my intuitive mind? Is it my higher self? Is it my ego? Is it, is it, is it this, that, and the third, right? And there are some ways that we can identify which voice is loudest at any given time. And when I'm saying voices, I'm talking about Again, like these different levels or layers of consciousness that we're able to tune into. And we have developed and created a lot of these voices based on what we've been taught. Um, Sometimes you're hearing the voices of other people. So, for example, what I mean, you may hear your own thoughts in your own voice, but it's echoing what your mom told you. Right. Or it's echoing what your father or your peers or someone in from your relationship told you. Maybe they had a fear or worry or doubt and they projected that onto you. And so then you took that in and that voice became one of the voices in your head. So we have a lot to uh sort through i guess you could say in really starting to quiet the mind as we call it in order to allow ourselves to be in clear communion with our higher consciousness our higher mind our intuitive mind and it's something that we develop and get used to working with just like developing a muscle, right? And now, of course, it's true. There are some people that are just highly intuitive and they didn't work on it, but that doesn't mean that they understand it. Some people have some very clear or powerful um, intuitive gifts, but they don't understand it. And so they may come to fear it. They try to shove it away. And then they have a very uncomfortable experience with it because of their lack of understanding or even possibly because of what has been ingrained in them about it. So all of that makes sense, right? (laughs) So this, um, now that I think about it, this thought probably prompted because one of the people in the seeker circle um, actually sent me a message and was talking to me about uh, their desire to connect with their guides, but they had some hesitation around it for some personal reasons. And so we had a bit of a back and forth. And then the next day, they sent a message um, saying that they actually made an attempt to connect with one of their guides, and they did, and it was a positive experience. So I was really excited for them, and I was excited that they allowed themselves to move beyond their fear or hesitation and that they actually had an experience that was, you know, something they enjoyed. So, you know, it's kind of like all of these voices, though, that we have, whether they're the voices of people in our lives, voices or stories that we've heard on movies, I mean, songs, songs echo in your head, those become stories. We act and respond from all the input around us. That's why people say, be very mindful of what you feed your mind. You know, if you are listening to 
um, music or watching movies that are violent, that affects your mood. It affects your energy. It affects your mind. You know, my mom watches the news all day long, like literally. She's obsessed with watching the news. And a lot of what she talks about, no matter what it is, is very fear-based. And I always tell her it's because she's watching the news all day and she's feeding that energy in her space constantly that it leaves this that impression kind of leaks into her point of view about everything. So, you know, anyway, all of our noise causes many of us to trust our intuition or want to connect with our intuition or understand like we want to work through the noise. And sometimes it's just to alleviate stress, right? I mean, listen, there are so many reasons why we want to figure out and manage all the noise. Well, I was thinking about 2019 and we talked about it being a universal year three. And this year, the energy is really about creative creativity. Three is the child, the creator, the creator, the creative energy. And I was thinking about what it takes to access that childlike wonderment, the imagination, the the playful, the lightheartedness of a child before they have been too conditioned to only tune into the analyzer, to only focus on logic, right? To be very much in their um, the left hemisphere of the brain. We're, we're taught these things, and for good reason. I mean, it helps us to be safe in this material realm. We have to use our logic and our rational mind to, you know, navigate this world in very safe ways. But there's this innocence. That's what we call it. We call the innocence of a child. But really what we're seeing in them, that innocence, is that they are still accessing that higher mind what some call the God mind, what some call, again, imagination, the creative mind. Children are curious. They're brilliant, right? And as we grow, it's not like that part or that accessibility is removed from us. It's just that we are taught to focus on other aspects of our consciousness or our minds. And so some of that uh, creative energy may get stifled and we may have more difficulty accessing it. Now, for some people, they really hold on to that creative energy and able to channel it quite e- easily, like artists and musicians and writers. And, you know, a lot of people hold on to some aspect of that. And interestingly, you know, some people are only able to access it through like turmoil or hurt. Like I used to write poetry and it seemed to flow like water when I was upset, but it was kind of like I had to use this release of getting the word and the feeling and the emotion out. But as I did that, I went into a trance of one of the voices, what the voice of emotion, the voice of feeling, I tapped into that and I was able to channel it through me and use it in a way that was creative. So we're able to tap into these higher aspects of ourselves more regularly, a little tongue-tied, and it reminds me of what I was saying about the power symbol. It's like we go back and forth, back and forth, analytical mind, intuitive mind, analytical mind, intuitive mind, until we finally learn how to harmonize the two, till we find that balance of being able to be very grounded in here while still knowing how to access and hear and listen to our higher minds. So this year um, is a great time for that, really. I mean, if you haven't already started the process on purpose, this may be a good time to explore that. And if you've already been playing with it or curious about it, There are layers to it. 
you keep developing. We keep going in this whole process of spiritual development, spiritual awakening, self-healing, self-connection, all of it. It's progressive. We go through this progression of healing and awakening. It doesn't stop. You know, I think of, um, you know, I'll just say this as fast as I can, but like when I was mm, three to five, I used to see a translucent pink woman in the kitchen. And as I went on throughout my life, um, in my teenage years, I could sense energies or presence of energies um, very strongly, but I didn't know how to translate it. I didn't know what it meant. So it became something that I was afraid of and very uncomfortable with. Fast forward to doing this work, I started to develop my intuitive mind. And so I started to have more understanding about what I could see, feel, and sense in non-physical form. And then I got to a point where I thought I understood how I translated what I could see, feel, and sense in non-physical form. And I thought I understood my intuitive mind. The minute I thought I understood it, it shifted. It expanded. The expansion of meaning started to happen where it wasn't just that I could translate oracle cards. I literally started to channel and get messages that way. I literally had experiences of seeing different energies in people's spaces. It kept changing. My experiences with the intuitive mind kept developing and expanding. So my point is, no matter where you are in the process, don't just think like, oh, this is what I do and how I do it and I'm done. Don't limit yourself. We can always continue to develop, just like with our um, analytical minds. I mean, you're feeding your mind all the time. I'm sure there are books that you read, classes you take, all of these things to inform yourself, to give yourself more access to more knowledge. And if you want to deepen your understanding of all you ingest, you have to allow yourself to play with experience. Like you could read about meditation and what it is, but until you practice it, you won't really understand. So that's that. I don't know where I was going with it, but the point is this year is a good time to (laughs) allow ourselves to play with this intuitive mind because it really does support that energy of creative flow and remember there's balance in all things and you know speaking of this just as a side note um, a lot of people ask me about channeling and this is one of the things that we can expand meaning around a lot of people are very rigid in definition like oh the word channeling means you do this xyz Okay, it's very limiting. In a lot of ways, we limit ourselves through language. I mean, I talk to you about this all the time. Even some of the experiences we have in this realm of like energy work, we can't put into words. And even when we do find a way to describe it, we know that our description is limiting. We know it's not fully, you know, conveying what our experience was. And that's because language a lot of times, does limit things because we have these hard-line definitions. So with this whole conversation of expanding meaning, I'm going to say that I have an expanded view of channeling. (laughs) And the reason is because the way we channel, it can look different person to person. And again, for myself, even though, okay, here's an example. When I was writing poetry, I was channeling. Some people would say, oh, she was just writing. No, I wasn't just writing. I was channeling. I was channeling my emotion. I was channeling other voices. I was channeling other inspiration. When people, um, athletes, they get in the zone, they call it, they are channeling something, you know, musicians, artists, when they get into their flow of creativity, they are channeling something. So that is not very different from channeling the intuitive mind. It's basically that you're allowing yourself to be a conduit of something, whether it's 
information, a message, whatever, and how you convey it is how it may be unique to you. So again, I mean, in my opinion, an artist is a channeler, a dancer is a channeler, you know, all of these different things we are channeling in some way. And so I say that to say, like, if you are someone who is channeling or you feel that that is something that you are just naturally inclined to do or having those types of experiences, but what you have read about it your experience doesn't meet that hard line definition. And so don't dismiss it. <laughs> That's all I'm saying. Because everything in our world is defined by someone else. And it could be defined by their limited point of view and their limited experience. But you can allow yourself to think and experience beyond what has been defined by others. I hope this makes sense to you. So anyway, with channeling and um, really connecting with the intuitive mind, period, a lot of people are able to do this through a trance-like state. And what puts you in a trance-like state? What helps you to come out of the analytical mind and just be like, have that moment of presence and just accessing a higher consciousness. You probably do it all the time and don't even recognize it as that because it didn't fit someone's definition. But for example, again, what I said to you earlier, when I am driving, I start channeling. When I am in the shower, when I first started channeling intuitively, like intuitive messages would come through, I would it would often happen when I was walking and then I would catch myself pacing back and forth. Now I can do it just sitting still, but even when I'm doing it, sometimes my head or my eyes will dart back and forth. So my point is, is that sometimes things that we do, even physically, the way that we sit, I talk to people about finding their seat. I actually posted something for the Patreons about this. Our posture, a lot of things, open us up to being more receptive to higher states of consciousness. It could be drumming. That's why, you know, like shamanic drumming can put you in a trance-like state. All kinds of things. But anyway, this all ties into expansion of meaning and how we do this when we do allow ourselves to move more into our intuitive nature and we allow ourselves to start to see things in new ways, to redefine things, to open our minds to possibility, that childlike wonderment, that intuitive state of mind. It helps us to grow. Again, it sharpens our awareness. It's part of the thing that we're meant to tap into. Again, part of your natural design in order to learn how to mm, function <laughs> in your true, most natural state. And that harmony, analytical mind, intuitive mind, your feminine, your masculine, your ego, your higher self. All of these layers of duality that we are contending with. And as we work with and acknowledge all of these aspects of us, we come into harmony and understanding. But it's so beautiful because when we even allow ourselves to, you know, connect with our intuitive mind, it just naturally starts to expand meaning in our lives. Like I'm sure a lot of you who do energy work or meditate or do yoga, these things, like I said in the beginning, you start to see the world differently. You start to see life differently. You start to just naturally have more compassion, be in gratitude for things that you may have taken for granted before. You just go deeper into these beautiful energies that are mm, the result of your awakening. 
that are a result of you harmonizing and loving not just you, but the world around you. Coming out of judgment, coming out of fear, functioning from, vibrating from higher levels, higher frequencies. Understanding your ability. I mean, it's just so beautiful what goes on. And, you know, these different voices, again, that we develop through our life experience, that we've developed from, you know, what we've heard, what we've been taught, on and on and on. And coming back to the power symbol, you know, that can even help us when we think about Working with and the development of the voices we've had. Because remember I said, if we look at that power symbol like we started in the core of it, in the womb, and we worked our way out through all those spirals, through all those rotations, we were picking up voices, creating voices, which is to say ideas and beliefs that have been programmed and logged into our consciousness. So, there was a couple of voices when I was driving that day. I was like, okay, well, what are the voices that we all have commonly, right? What are the the different characters that we all have? And here's just a couple that came to mind that day. One, the fear monger. Right away, I was like, we all have that voice of fear, that voice of worry, of doubt, the one who is afraid. And again, that voice could have been a result of what we have been taught, experiences that we've had, whatever, why ever we develop that voice, pretty much probably safe to say we all have a fear monger, right? Um, We also all have a cheerleader. Now, our cheerleaders may be stifled by the fear monger at times, but we all have a cheerleader. We all have a voice, even... And this is the thing. Some of these voices are loud for us. Some are a dull whisper. Some of them come forward and we may push them away because we haven't strengthened them. Maybe your fear monger is loud as hell and your cheerleader is like a little mouse. But it's only that way because that's what you focused more attention to and what you've believed in more. Maybe you believe and trust your fear monger more than you trust your cheerleader. And if that's the case, ask yourself why. Okay, so we all have the cheerleader. Somewhere in there, there is a part of us that believes in us and cheers us on, pats us on the back, is excited when we accomplish things, and so on. We all have a cynic, or as I was driving, it also came up like a heckler, right? We all have this little heckler that's kind of like, so annoying, that voice again of doubt that may come in when we are contemplating doing things or the one that's in judgment of us, teasing us. But we're doing it. This voice is in our head, right? Um, We all have an optimist. Again, the voice may be loud, it may be soft, but we all have it and we can make that voice louder if we so choose. We all have some optimism in there somewhere. We all have the sage. And when that title popped to mind, the sage, really what I was thinking about is our inner wisdom, our higher self, we often call it. We have, you have access to a wise one. a wisdom keeper. There's a sage that is living, that exists within your consciousness that you can hear and be guided by. How amazing is that? Now, here's the thing. Your sage may talk to you all the time, but do you listen? Again, maybe the heckler or the fear monger mutes out the sage, but it doesn't have to be that way. And one of the easiest ways to do it is start to notice which voice is talking. Start to notice when you are listening to your voice of fear. Start noticing when you're listening to your heckler, when you're listening to your cheerleader. And if you're able to trust your cheerleader, notice when there is that voice of wisdom that comes through. And if you can allow yourself to go out on a limb and trust that wisdom. 
We also have, you know, this voice of sabotage. <laughs> we do. But above all the voices, there's this neutral observer. You know, and this is talked about so much in the realm of spirituality. You know, like people are like, are you the observer? Are you the one observing? You are the observer. You're the um, observer. You're the one being observed. You're all of these things, right? But we have this aspect, this consciousness, this aspect that is a neutral observer. Because if you are recognizing the fear monger, you, there's a part of you that is observing this other part of you. Do you see what I mean? So a lot of people wonder like, well, which one am I? I mean, really, listen, at this stage, we'll say, one of the key things is first being an observation and recognizing just that these different aspects of you exist. Stop ignoring these different aspects of you. Start to pay attention to which voice you're allowing to guide you, to lead you on your path. Start recognizing which voice you want to make louder or stronger. Take notice to how and when you tune into that neutral observer. What does it feel like? What's that experience? When does it happen? It's all about self-observation. No matter what you're trying to develop, you have to be an observation of you to really understand and manage any of it. And in all of this, through this self-observation, you start to become more familiar with your sage, your higher consciousness, your neutral observer. You start to become more familiar with your intuitive mind. That higher mind that other aspect of consciousness that you are designed to access. That other aspect of consciousness that helps you to expand meaning in your life beyond what has been defined by somebody else's analyzer. You know, when we allow ourselves to move into these spaces and expand definition. We can do it through, we can expand through experience. We can expand by becoming familiar, again, with that intuitive mind, not being dismissive of ourselves, learning what it means to be able to access this intuitive part of your nature how to translate it, when it's useful. Again, you know, we have been trained to use the analyzer and for good reason. But the downside to it is that we have also been taught to ignore our intuition. But why would you discredit a part of your natural design? That's always what it comes down to, to me. Like, you know, this we're designed for this. Like, literally. Like, even energy healing, meditation, all of these things, they're so fascinating to me because we are all designed for it. Now, of course, your cynic <laughs> could come in. Your fear monger could talk you out of it. Disbelief. That's fine. But what if it is true? What if it's true that you are actually designed for this? How else would those weird things in your life have been possible? Those times where you know you had some weird, you know, um, what do you call it? Like energetic experience. Whether you saw an apparition, whether you felt energy in a room, whether you were able to um, intuit something, you knew something was going to happen before it happened. All of these things that you may have been dismissive of in the past are all of these things that you are experiencing now and in awe of. What if you move beyond the awe and into understanding? How could this support you on your path? So, yeah, I think I kind of went all over the place with this, but one of the things um, I wanted to offer again, and I, again, because I, I get questions about intuitive development all the time, and 
giving you an answer in email is much different than guiding you through the experience. So there's an online class that I taught called Intuitive Mastery. And I also have another online course called Reiki Tools. So both of those I put together in a package called Intuitive Reiki. And I did it because a lot of Reiki practitioners have their like biggest questions after class when they're in their practice and wondering how to connect with symbols, how to do distant work, how to connect with their intuitive minds. I combined these two classes in Intuitive Reiki and together it's, I think, $350, but I created a coupon code last year for it and the coupon code is I'm ready. I am R-E-A-D-Y one word. And using the coupon code, you can access both of these courses for only $100. Now, it's, you know, you get a lot. (laughs) The Intuitive Mastery alone is 12 modules. Reiki Tools is four. But it's a lot of guided information. It guided experiences to help you deepen your practice, but more importantly, help you to get to understand and explore your intuitive mind. And so I decided to put this offer back in my newsletter for people who are just, you know, signing up for my newsletter. But I wanted to let all of you know. And the reason is, is because again, it's the new year. We're in this creative energy, uh, the three universal three year. It's a wonderful energy to support us in our intuitive minds seeing in new ways, expanding meaning in our lives. So, I mean, you're literally getting both classes for less than the price of one. But, of course, this deal is going to expire. So, um, if you want to access all of this information, go through guided experiences for your intuitive development, then make sure you sign up before February 15th because then the coupon code will be gone. So you can go to my website, go to yuchi.com, Y-E-W-C-H-I.com. If you click on the online courses, you will then see um, an option to select Intuitive Reiki. Again, use coupon code I'm ready. And if you are not on my newsletter list, be sure to sign up for that while you're there anyway, because just like this spontaneous symbol connection challenge I did with the Seeker Circle, who knows what will come up throughout the year. So if you want to keep in touch and just be informed about upcoming classes, Reiki classes, online classes, anything, whatever is going on, sign up for my newsletter and you will get monthly updates as well as some free gifts. You get 22 Days of Transformation and Creating with the Moon and Stars for free. So that's it for today, you guys. I am so thankful to all of you. Thank you to everyone who has become a Patreon. I truly appreciate your support. And don't forget, this process that we're all going through. It's progression. We are working through the layers, expanding our understanding, expanding our minds. So be gentle and kind and loving to yourself through it all because it is a hell of a journey. So, okay, I guess that's it. I'll talk to you all next week and remember to always journey in love.